I only feel like it's right to start the show with Bobbo, the Bobby Borkin. Bob, you want a meatball? <laughs> I gave him a meatball today. He's my buddy boy. Folks, hello. How are you doing? Welcome back to the Heine House Gaming and Tech Podcast. This is a June 14th, 2020 recording uh, episode 58. 58. We have a jam-packed episode uh, this this episode. Honestly, it's I have a lot of stuff. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to keep it under an hour. This thing is going to be packed tighter than a repro car in a top loader. It's going to be uh it's going to be tighter than Pete Doors suitcase after a gaming convention. Yeah, I thought of those beforehand. Uh-huh. That's cool. That's cool. I'm making it work. You know, jokes are jokes. They're good. Sort of. Maybe you can judge. Don't judge me, but judge me. Go ahead. Uh, Heinehouse.com is a website. Um, social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, all over the place. Heine House, the Heine House. Go look for me. Just type it in. I don't care where you are. Wherever you are right now, just go to your social media, wherever you're at. Just type it in. Heine House. Watch what happens. It's magical. And also, I have a hotline, a voicemail hotline. You call it. You don't even talk to me. Just leave me a voicemail. That's right. Don't worry. You will not be annoyed with talking to me. You just... I don't want to talk to him either. <laughs> <laughs> she, she just needs to calm herself. Uh, hey, you need to relax because you have a voicemail later on, Missy. We can't wait to get to that. We have some voicemail. I'm just talking about it. So 503-908-5490 is the phone number. If you want to call and uh, get at any one of us, probably ask her what in the fuck was she thinking? ask her that she'll she'll answer uh but if you're outside of the u.s or it's long distance and you don't want to call completely understand set, record yourself on your computer in fact i'm using i'm using something for the first time for the podcast it's called clean feed cleanfeed.net go check it out it works in the browser you can record yourself uh it picks up your inputs i'm running it through my focus right right now it's great so uh shout out to ryan the digital rhino my man patron good friend um, long time listener of, of, uh, my podcast and content. He turned me on to clean feed, which is great. So I'm checking it out, trying it right now as a backup. I have a, th I have a two way backup going on right now, clean feed in the browser for, for the computer and a, my task cam, um, DR 50, which is backing up right here. Yeah, that's right. You know what? I have nothing but problems, but you know what? If you have backups, you are good. We have some stuff to talk about later in tech section where, talking about ransomware and all these other hacks and things like that. So again, it's another another indication, another, um, it's a great time to say, hey, back up your shit. Now's the time to back it up. Let's do that. Uh, so anyway, that's the hotline, 503-908-5490. We can talk about games or tech, whatever you want. And of course, boom, patrons, much love to you. I am shouting you out. Thank you. Brandon, George, Aaron, Luke, Justin, and the entire main floor, ground floor. Thank you, folks. This show is completely funded and supported. And here today, because of your support on Patreon, it means a lot to me. It means everything to me, to, to be honest. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to uh, to get right into. So let's just jump right in. Random news. Big, big thing this week. Lots of stuff to talk about. PS5, PC gaming show, DMCA stuff, audio, copyright, tons of stuff. Here we go. Jumping in. Get ready. DMCA Digital Millennium Copyright Act. That's what it stands for, folks. There was a whole bunch of DMCA music takedowns on Twitch this last week, and it was running rampant. Basically, what's happened is the RIAA, the Recording Industry Association of America, that's what that stands for, they basically have come forward and said, okay, Twitch, you have a bunch of people on your platform who are using music that has copyrights. We own the copyrights. We want you to remove that infringing content. That's how it works. It's worked this way from the inception of the DMCA. It is there to protect copyright holders. All right. Not necessarily the artists, not necessarily the labels, but they kind of get roped into it too sometimes, but it's most likely to, to protect the people who own the copyrights of the music. When the RIAA comes at your door and they say, this is infringing, you need to act and you need to take it down now. When they say that, whatever platform they're talking to, in this case, Twitch, Twitch has to abide by that. They have to say, fine, we will take it down. 
If they do not, they are liable to lose their platform. Let me reemphasize that, to lose their platform completely. Twitch or people? Twitch. Have... Wow, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, like if they, if they don't abide by that, they can get um, sued, take down. Like if they're like, they're uploading our content. What happened with Napster? When Napster, this is how it all started and came to be. Like Napster was uploading that. It's a really, really crazy game. So we also saw this with YouTube and videos and audio and ads. Ad, I mean, the, the list is, goes on and on and on. The whole copyright system is, it's tough. Because in one sense, you're like, well, you shouldn't be using stuff if, if it's copyright. Like you should, you know, you should not do that. But then we have this whole world of entertainment that is completely massive. It's it's ma it's massive. It's it's everything. Movies, music, art. It's it's massive. There's fair use, there's copyright, there's all the stuff. What we've learned from this though is that we have a system that's completely broken and needs to be redesigned for the new world, for today. For people who are content creators, for people who are producing things like everyone needs to be protected. Yes, everyone needs to have you know, they need to get paid. They need to have their music shown, their art shown. Things need to be published. Like, I get it, but we need a new system. And I think, I honestly, I feel like we're almost past the point of no return with this. This is, it's, we're way too far into this. So as far as like major labels, publishers, like huge, huge, like, you know, AAA games and all this stuff, like we're, we're in a really weird spot. For the indies, I think, and I'm speaking for myself because I have some news about this, how I'm going to help with this. Um, I think we have a unique role we could play. We'll, we'll get into that. So anyway, what's happening? I'm kind of going off on a tangent. What's happening is that the RAA said, Twitch, take down all this shit. Do it now. And they did. They did. They went through millions and millions and millions and millions of accounts. And whatever the RAA said needed to be taken down, they took it down and they gave those accounts a copyright strike. No warning, nothing. Just boom. There are Twitch accounts today, and I'm seeing it on Twitter all over, that have been banned already, that have been there from the very beginning, doing stuff. They got three strikes, boom, they're done. From clips that had copyrighted music from years ago. No warning, nothing. That's crazy that they didn't send them an email like, hey, give them a time frame, delete this in like less uh, than agree. a week. I agree. I agree. No warning at all. Just boom. Those see poor people. Think about it. You wake up one morning and you're, you're banned from Twitch. Like you're done. That's it. And you've done nothing wrong except for having that music in the background. I can't get over it. No warning. Yeah, no warning. That's the biggest thing that gets me. I got goosebumps. Look at those fucking goosebumps. They're huge. It just, it drives me nuts. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it. So what's happening now is Twitch is like, okay, we are... We are working with content creators. You know, we're, we're trying to come out. We're going to come out with a system that analyzes your clips and then takes and removes them, deletes them without a penalty. Like they're trying to backpedal because they have no other choice. The RIAA came through and was like, bam, right? They had to do it. And so you can blame both parties. You can Actually, you can blame everyone, right? You blame the content creator for using copyrighted material. Blame Twitch for just going through and not giving any warnings. And blame the RIAA for coming through and just being like, you know what? Okay, everyone's in quarantine right now. DJ streams are blowing up. Content creators blowing up. Oh, I guess there's money to be had over here. Fuck them. Get them. And that's what happened. It's a really, really, it's a really tough thing. It's, it's difficult. And I see it from all these sides, right? Because I'm also a music producer. I also upload my music and want people to listen to it and stream it and buy it and download it and love it, enjoy it and share it. I want all that too. I also want to get paid for it. I get it. I completely get it. I also see the value in having some sort of new system in place, though. This is insane. This is insane. So the thing about it is that Twitch also, shame on Twitch, they don't have a great way or any way for you to go mass delete these clips right now. So there's, so to be honest, like this will change in the future. Sure. Maybe next week, maybe in two weeks, whatever. But right now, content creators on Twitch do not have a legit way who, who may have thousands of clips with copyright material. They don't have a real way to go in and delete all of their clips. They have to do it one by one. One content creator said, well, I have two strikes and I have another, she said something like she has like 100,000 clips or something. Like, wow, okay, that's that's nuts. That's nuts. I can't even imagine having 100,000 clips. But she said she had like 100,000 clips and she can't delete them all. That's just impossible. Like, if you have that, that's a that's a huge problem. So she, there's no way for her to protect herself. She's preparing to be banned. Like, 
she's preparing for it. It's going to happen. And it's really sad. There's no way to protect yourself other than just don't use copyrighted material from this point forward. Uh, delete your videos. If you use copyright material during your stream, delete your videos, delete your clips. Don't keep it at all and just get rid of it or just don't use them at all. It's a really, really tough thing. And so, yeah, I have all these, these big, big long notes here, but I basically just shotgun blasted it out. So I don't think I need to recap any of this stuff, but that's, that's what's happening on Twitch right now. It happened on YouTube already. All right. That's why that's when YouTube came out with their audio library. They came out with this to help creators because everyone was using other music and they were getting takedowns and they're pulling all their stuff. YouTube's even more fucky, to be honest. It's even more crazy because they they like censor what you're talking about. You know, they, they'll censor like what you're saying and and what you're talking about. And then how does that work for ads? And like, is it ad worthy? And like, we don't we don't want to have our ads on this person who's talking about this or this. It's scary. Yeah, YouTube's a whole nother whole monster. Other episode. Yeah, whole nother episode. <laughs> a whole other monster to deal uh, with. Absolutely great. Absolutely. So yeah, it's scary. It's super scary. Um, I bring this up because this is a huge part of the news. But also, I had this like epiphany. I'm like, you know what? This is this is crazy. What can I do to help this out? And you know what? I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do something actually. So ambitious, the most ambitious thing I've ever done musically. And I honestly, I feel like this is the best time to do this. Everyone's going through all this stuff. I literally, I really want to come to the rescue. I want to help. You know why? Because my entire life, I have spent my time working on my craft, being a musician, working on, on creating audio, creating music, trying to be some sort of an inspiration, trying to be somebody that offers something to you guys. It's just straight up. Not only that, but I love doing it. It is it is a self-expression of myself. And I love to, I am self-satisfied uh, with that. I love to do that. I can't get enough of it. I love music more than anything. It's it's incredible. So with that being said, I thought, my gosh, for the, from the last 20 years, I've been writing music. Not all of my music, I feel, fit into a certain category. I'll make albums. I'll make video games, uh, music for sound. Um, for video games, I do sound design, music, all this sort of thing. But I have songs that may be part complete, maybe not. Maybe they're just ideas. Maybe they're loops. Maybe they're just drum beats. Maybe they're just like piano lines, ideas. Literally thousands of them. I said, this is it. I can take all of these songs that I've been sitting on forever, package them up, polish them up a little bit, leave them in their basic form. I don't need to go in and add new parts and make it this perfect arrangement. Fuck that. I'm going to just take all of my ideas from a majority of my songs that I've been composing and then sitting on for the last 20 years and package them up and put them online. And I'm going to make that completely copyright free. How about that? Think about that for a second. That way... If you're a Twitch streamer, if you're a YouTuber, if you're a content creator who's putting things online, you can use this music in your content without worry of any copyright strike at all. Why? Because I own the copyright to it, and I can say if there's going to be a copyright uh, strike or not. And guess what? There's not. I'll leave it wide open. This is a win-win for everyone. You can use music and not have to worry about any of that bullshit. I get my name out further and hopefully more people jump on the Heine House bandwagon, come along for the ride, check out what I'm doing, get down with it, have fun, be, be part of the community, which I truly want to continue to build. Maybe a few of you will like the music and then maybe you'll come back and you'll purchase and or stream more and take part in the other music that I'm doing for games, for my personal stuff, for my bands, Beyond the Arcade, uh, all the stuff that I'm doing aside and separate from all of that. That's what I want. And hopefully if you like it and you find value, maybe you'll give me a tip. Maybe you'll come back. Maybe you'll even purchase some albums. Maybe you'll go to my band camp and buy my discography. You know, like it may go into that. And that is, that's part of my business. That's part of what I do. It's part of what I enjoy doing is making music. It's a win-win for everyone. You get something, I get something, we're happy. And you eliminate that horseshit that's going on right now with the DMC. How about that? I'm going to round with applause. I feel pretty good. I feel great. I feel great. Because for like my entire life, I've sat here and I've said, and even I talk about it with Steph, I go, Steph, like even when I was writing um, Couplescape, even back when I was writing that album over the last two or three years, 
I said, I have all this really aggressive like hip hop stuff that doesn't fit the feel of couple skate. I'm looking for that 80s, 90s roller skating rink, like party hits. But I have like six or seven of these great aggressive hip hop, like almost gritty type tunes that don't fit. What am I going to do with these? Am I going to release like a hip hop, like aggressive, angry album? I almost did. I'm really close. I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to just include these in my, my bundle of music. Because sometimes you need something that sounds gritty and dirty. Like you need these different genres. So yeah, I know I'm really going on and on about this, but it's huge. This is huge, huge, huge stuff. Even if you're not a content creator, I know some of you may be like, that's cool, but I'm not really, I'm not into that. I don't stream. I don't YouTube. I don't do it. Guess what? You may have a party. You may need some background music. Maybe you're in school. You need to study. Maybe you need some like chill lo-fi stuff. Maybe you need to be just hanging out, listen to some music in the background, invite your friends over, crack a few beers, put on some party hits. Dude, it's there. Folks, this this is the next level for Heine House right here. The Heine House music collection. I'm calling these this whole compilation, I'm calling them background beats. Background beats. And then they will be like hip hop, background beats, you know, um, whatever. EDM dance, you know, background beats, lo-fi, whatever I'll name them. So it is coming. I'm currently about 110 songs in. So I have that. There's probably another 100 or 200 to go. I need to continue to work on this. But once it's done... I'm going to be just rapid fire uploading it. It's going to be dope. Be on the lookout for that. Please follow me on social media and join the Discord because I would love to keep you up to date on what's going on there. I posted a video on online. People are really excited. So that's good to see. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's get that out of my head. Boy, that was fantastic. I'm so excited. Um, Call of Duty Season 4 update is here. Short, short mention of this. Why? Because it's fucking huge. Again, another massive update. PS4, it's 32.5 gigs. Xbox One is 44 and a half gigs. On PC with Warzone, it's 45 gigs. And I didn't even download it. I enjoy playing Warzone. But my goodness, this game is like almost a terabyte in size now at this point. I'm just being sarcastic, but it's it's huge. It has to be at least three or 400 gigs with all these updates. Has to be going to be the new norm it is this is I think the you're new right. normal i think you're right i remember when it when it first came out it was like was it 80 it was like 80 gigs yeah we were like holy shit and people were like well final fantasy 7 was like 120 so whatever and i'm like yeah okay but this game is now every update it's like it's like 40 gigs 20, 20 to 50 gigs is it just like new maps and new con oh okay. yeah so it's skins maps modes like tons of stuff is it free to download or is it? It is. Yeah. You know, at least you're getting your money's worth, I guess. It's true. It's true. I mean, you I mean, got to buy, you got to spend your money on a new hard drive. I was going to say, you need to get a four terabyte hard drive just to, to hold it all. Yeah, this is true. This is true. You know, but hey, what can you do? What can you do? Um. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's massive. So anyway, download that at your own risk. And lastly, in random news, I should have put this in gaming, but I wanted to get it out at the beginning of the show. I'm really excited. Folks. I am currently beta testing Hotshot Racing. Yes, I am actually beta testing it on Xbox One. Hotshot Racing is the new upcoming racing, arcade racing game developed by Sumo Digital and Lucky Mountain Games that I had the absolute pleasure to do the soundtrack for. I produced 12 songs on that game. And it is, this is, this is cool. There's like so many cool updates that I'm giving you guys. Like I'm super gushing about it. I've been talking about it forever, but here it is. It's coming, beta testing it. The, from what they said, they're going to do a beta test on PS4 and on Switch, probably in the coming weeks. And then the release date is going to be summer of this year, summer of 2020. Okay? So it's coming. I get. I, prom I promise you, it's coming. I'm under NDA with a lot of stuff. I can't post um, footage of it or anything like that. I did post a screenshot, like, from my phone, holding my Xbox to, like, show people, like, it's real. Everyone's like, oh, it's vapor, vapor wave or vaporware or whatever. No, it's real. Believe me, it's coming. So very, very cool. And it was featured on the um, the indie, what was it called? Um, like Future Games. Future Games, thank you. It was featured on Future Games. Oh yeah, it's so cool, so cool. So it's coming, very excited. So with that, let's jump right into gaming news because we have a ton to talk about in gaming news. Number one, the PlayStation 5 is finally being revealed. It's, it's here, round of applause. Let's do it. Sony, congratulations. The show started out 
pretty fantastic. Started out showing a bunch of amazing games. Uh, and I just made a small list. Well, small. It's actually kind of a nice list. Maybe 10 games of games that stood out to me that I want to talk about. Um, we first got the Sony like tech conference where it was really geeky and very much about the, the hardware and the tech side of the new PlayStation 5. So people were like, wait, what is all this? Like they were totally geeked out. They're like, where are the games? There were the games. There were no games there. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. <laughs> had a thought, had a thought. And so what happened there was they didn't have any games. They didn't really talk about the, like they talked about the system and the hardware, the internals. This is all about the games. And then it was about something more at the end. They surprised us all. It was really cool. Um, Gran Turismo 7. That was like the first thing they showed, which got me extremely hard in a yard. Hard in a yard. Um, it looks incredible. And it, appears to be like they're going back to the the original Gran Turismo, like the roots of it, even the menu system and the music. Oh gosh, yes, please give me this, give us the jazz. I want to I want I want to hear jazz, proper jazz in my garage looking at my my hypercar. Like I want that. Or my street car or my GT car, whatever, just give it to me. Looks great. Looks like it's going back to its roots. I'm super hyped. Yes, we knew there'd be Gran Turismo. If they're going to continue the franchise. Boom. Looks Awesome. Let's go back to the roots. Game called Stray. I think this was probably, uh, on top of like everything that was shown, this game actually I thought was the coolest looking one and most unique because Kitty. You I know. know. You, you know you liked it. <laughs> I was going to say, I wish they actually showed like what the gameplay was. We don't really know. Did, Honestly, I didn't search to see if there was any additional gameplay. I didn't think there was. No, I, I think it was just that trailer. I didn't see anything either. But it almost looked like, um, like I want to say like cyberpunk. It looked kind of cyberpunk-ish. Yeah. And had like futuristic stuff. Like it, it looked like this. It was like a city of robots. And then like the only living thing, uh, breathing thing, I guess, was the cat. Yeah, yeah. And I had like a backpack on, right? Yeah, it was just like almost like tech, like sort of lit up like backpack. Like, I don't know what that is. But again, it looked so intriguing. So, so cool. And it really stood out. I think, yeah, I, I, I wrote here, all robots, no humans, cyberpunk, cyberpunk oh. kitty edition. Is what I wrote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks awesome. Yeah. So we're, we're down to try that. I mean, you basically you can put an animal in anything and you can guarantee yourself a winner. I mean, I will buy it. <laughs> she's in line for that shit. Um, Sack Boy, Little Big Planet, Big Adventure. That looked cool. It's cool that we're getting another one. Yeah, see? Yeah. Gave her a mic. Now she's in. Let's go. What do you got? No, you I got? feel bad. I don't want to like take over your show. Please. I love A and B in this shit. Let's go. No, what do you got? I think it's so. We were talking about this at one point yeah. about how Little Big Planet series just kind of ended like it wasn't was that long ago too yeah 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 and then this came out of nowhere little uh or sack boy adventures <laughs> yeah is that what it's called no i just <laughs> you're like no no you know it's you know the sick and twisted mind of jason heine oh. as you were saying that i'm looking at i'm going that nut sack boy <laughs> <laughs> of course of course what i'm oh, sorry i ruined i ruined everything don't i i'm sorry no it's cool but it, it looks, looks like fun and what was really awesome about it was that there was co-op yeah yeah, exactly. Is that the first time? I think that's the first time we've seen co-op. Well, I think I think the other ones had co-op, but this was more like a platformer. I think I I'll be honest, I haven't I played the first one, but it was so long ago and it was only a handful of times, mm -hmm. but Yeah, this one seemed more platformy and and maybe there's still some puzzles, but not as as many puzzles as the first one. I think it looks great. I think it looks great. And we were just talking about that, like you said. So it's it's returning. It's coming back. The sack boy. They need to have potatoes, uh potato sack racing. Remember that? Remember doing that? You put your legs in you put both your legs in the potato sack and then you go jumping. It never worked because I was always taller than everybody else. <laughs> so it was so really how did you awkward. Do it? Did you just like just just like ran or what? I don't even oh, no, know. Oh no, you can't because no, you have longer legs, so you could actually jump higher. You yeah. actually have an advantage. Yeah, but not if I'm paired with someone who's shorter than I am. Oh, that's right. I can you only do go as dual, far. You do it. Um, they, that's right. You have two people in it. Yeah. You have two people in the sack. I'm right. leaving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it's so true though. All right, destruction. Is it destruction? Yeah, destruction all stars. It looks like a mix between destruction derby and rocket league to me. And a little bit of onrush, maybe. A little bit of onrush. It looks great. Basically, vehicle combat in like an arena style. It almost looks like the characters are driving and or outside of the vehicles, like running around, jumping off cars and shit. It looks great. Definitely going to be checking it out. It looks fantastic. Hitman 3, January 2021. They are wrapping up the trilogy of the Hitman series right there. And what they say is the, his biggest and most intimate contract yet. Looks really, really cool. So check that out. Astro's Playroom. I want that so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I knew it. I love that little robot. So cute. So cute. And in fact, our our my good friend John, he let me borrow his PS4 VR. And the very first game we played when he brought it over is like, you have to play this Astro game. I forget what it's called. It's Astro's something or Astro's. It's called something. But it features those robots. And to be honest, probably the most fun. Like, you can like look around and, and and control these little cute robots and like the the fit like it's a tech demo it's a tech demo but it's really really fantastic so it's cool to see that these little astrobots are back. You know what's incredible is that I feel like tech demos are probably some of the best games out there. <laughs> Very good point. Absolutely agree. Very good point. Um, yeah, you know why? It's because they have to show off like the best of the best. Like this is what we can do with this. Take this and make like here is the best that we can do right now with this. Here's what it was designed to do. It's like Wii Sports. Here's what this was designed to do. Showing off the Wii Motion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just thinking about <laughs> the pictures I have coming up about the PS5. I made a few memes. <laughs> we talk about Wii. I was thinking about it. It's coming up. Okay. Uh, Death Loop from Bethesda. Rival assassins locked into a time loop. Try to kill targets within a time limit, but you're also united, and it looks like a kind of 70s, but flat-shaded polygon in part type game. It looks really, really cool to where you jump in, you try to have to do this contract and kill people within a time limit, and then when you do or don't, like it reverses, and you go back in time and start again. It's, it reminds me, there was another game that kind of did this. What was that game? It, no, it wasn't Watch Dogs. I feel like there was another game that did a... Ah, oh, shit, I don't remember. I feel like I've seen this, though. Like a game that we're... Like you you do something, like you you execute a task or do something, and then it rewinds, like... like The only thing I could think of is like Prince of Persia, but that's if you mess... Or uh, The Sands of Time, but if you that's if you mess up a jump or get hit, you can reverse the game. Yeah, I'm thinking about like Mega Man Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> Which, hey, one of the greatest things ever. Just saying. I love that. I don't remember. Anyway, side tangent. I don't remember what it is. But yeah, Death Loop looks looks really great too. Wanted to bring attention to that. Uh, Resident Evil Village. Was this, what is, is this 13? What was this, Steph? What, what, I know you're coming over. What is this? I think it's, it's 8. Resident oh, eight. Evil 8. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because 13 would be, 13 is X and 2, 3, or X and 2, 3, X, X and, and th I, I, I. Yeah. Okay. I was tripping. When I saw that, that's that's my retro gameness. I thought like, 13, it's coming back. I'm like, couldn't even fucking do the Roman numerals right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 13, it's 8. Yeah, so, yeah. Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 8 looks great. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I get scared. She can't wait. She's 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 running off, but she says she can't wait. I get scared, man. I get scared when the horror games, man. They freak me out. I wet myself. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West, uh, very cool. A new Horizon and to the the series of that, which is going to be a massive success, a massive hit. This looks like it uh, follows suit, uh, follows suit with the um, uh, taking place in San Fran, which is really cool. So we're jumping out to the West Coast, hit, hence the name. And then, of course, to wrap things up with the PlayStation event, we finally see the actual console and its accessories. This was a, a huge surprise. People were not expecting this. They were just saying, we're going to just talk about games. It's nice that they gave us uh, a shot of the console. We see that the PlayStation 5, all right, well, it's not, I want to say not an actual picture, but a 3D rendering of it. But it basically, it's, it's the console. It looks like that. Um, we saw the media remote, the wireless headset, of course, the DualSense controller, an HD camera, and we also saw that the console will feature a disc version and a all-digital 
no disc version of the console. So one with a disc drive and one without. And uh, yeah, man, I think I almost feel like it's kind of split left and right with people saying they love it or hate it. Almost, I think I see, well, you would, right? You would see more, you would see people talking negatively about it more than you would see positive, right? What do you think of it? It's a good question. I actually don't mind it. I think it looks pretty cool and unique. Yeah. I, I do. I I like it. It's different looking and I and I think that's okay. Like yeah. Sony from the beginning of time have always been very conservative, I feel, with their console designs. Let's go back in time. Like look at this. This this is a Japanese PlayStation 2, but let I me mean, look at it. just a square thing here. And sure, it's like a two-tiered square. It looks nice. It looks good. Good, clean. It's always square. Square, square, square. Yeah. yeah. Except, Except for the PS3 fat, which was rounded and at the top. kind of yeah. weird looking. And everyone talked shit about that too when it came out. And now look, it's like coveted. Like, <gasps> you've got a 60 gig backwards compatibility. Like, they're crazy. It's more like the backwards compatibility and really not yeah. the, the actual what they really style. <laughs> but from the beginning of time, Sony has always been kind of conservative, right? I mean, look at the PS1, look at the PS2, the PS3 is kind of just bland and blobby. PS4, people said, remember when the PS4 came out? People talked shit. They said, it looks like a fucking eraser. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't, for some reason, I didn't ever come across that. I'm sorry. That. You can't see that now. It looks like I one of those it, pink erasers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just got her on that one. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. It does. But I still don't hate it. Like, right. Right. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not bothered by things i don't know hey that's fair and you know what maybe you're not and that's totally fine because you know what like it or not folks that's the design of it first thing i said when i looked at that i looked at the top and i go wow look at that the top part with it like open and fins going out it's very futuristic it, yeah Sorry. yeah that is for cooling folks that is where the air is going to be shooting out that is going to be like the space heater remember your ps3 how much heat came out of the side of that fucking thing? That's what that is. So they're going to shoot, well, depending if you have it vertical or horizontal, be shooting at the top or the side like that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's unique. I want to commend Sony for going outside the box and doing something a little risky. Doing something a little risky. Yeah, I, I mean, so on the same time, I like it and I'm, I'm accepting of it and I think it's great and I, I think it's great they did something unique. I also feel like it's it's definitely edgy. It's definitely like the, when they they had like the strand of hair, right? And and that strand of hair is very unique already. It's kind of like on the edge. And they could have split the hair to either go one way where it was leaning a little bit more like um more risky, right? More futuristic, more on the edge or a little bit more conservative. Maybe a little bit more flat, maybe a little bit less lines, you know, like a PS4 Pro or whatever. Like they could have done those things and they definitely lean more towards the futuristic risky side. In a way, like I looked at it and I was like, it almost looks like something Alienware might have produced maybe about 10 years ago. Almost like if you put the Alienware, honestly, and this is, I shouldn't even say this shit. But if you put the Alienware Alien logo on the front of this thing, if you look at it, it looks exactly like an Alienware PC, like straight up like from about 10 years ago. It's not a horrible thing. It's just that's how it looks to me. I am accepting of it. And when it comes out, I do want to buy the disc version of it. That is the one that I would always get just to have that option there. And I always think how much more expensive can a disc drive, a Blu-ray drive be on a console? So Sony's going to either have to come in and be like, they're either going to have to come in super aggressive, like it is a hundred bucks cheaper to get the all digital or, or 50. Yeah, I think that's about right. I mean, uh, like how much is a Blu-ray drive up for a computer? It's like what, 30 bucks? Yeah. And in mass produced like that, but we're talking about pennies. Probably. Yeah. So that's why I'm thinking they may... This actually, I would say like probably a hundred dollars less. Yeah, I think a hundred is a fair number. That would be the most aggressive number. I think that, um, I think this gives Sony a interesting position in the console market because they're, they're giving two offerings here. 
two offerings that allow them to do two price points. Is this the first time that they've done that? Yeah, they've I think never, it is. But they've offered two different versions. And is that, there a PS4 all digital? There is, isn't there? I don't, I don't know. Shit. Who the hell are we? We're talking, making I a know. podcast about gaming. I don't even fucking know. I mean, why would we though? We have a console that works. Why would we need to buy another one? Is there folks? Can someone let me know? Right in. Because I don't know. Um, so it's interesting. It gives them two price points. So, I mean, you know, they, they put the heat back on a Microsoft and, uh, you know, I, I think, I think this is a great time for gaming. Great time for gaming. Consoles. New consoles. It's just great. The whole thing is great. All right. I have something here for you folks. I have uh, a rendering. This is exciting. I have a rendering. If you are if you are not into buying the new PS5, maybe you'd be interested in these three other variants of the console that, uh, you know, I have inside sources. I have inside sources. And if you're not listening to this or watching this on the YouTube feed, where there's video, you need to go there and check this out at this timestamp, whatever the timestamp is here. What are we at? About 36 minutes, 35 minutes. Get in there. Go check it out. Because this is a rendering of my inside sources that there are going to be three other variants of the console. This is great. Great news for Sony PlayStation fans. Uh, and spoiler alert, I did make all these. All right. I'm trying to do a little, little something fun there. Uh, the number, The number one console here it is you could get yourself the playstation 5 comcast xfinity wireless router edition look at that isn't that beautiful yeah with the wireless antennas all sticking out of the top it says xfinity and big red letters all in the front just so you know what you're dealing with isn't that great comcast thank you yeah i think we'd love that we would love that what else could you get oh if you're interested you can get yourself the PS5 Nintendo Wii Digital Edition. Look at that. It's a freaking Nintendo Wii. So you get all the benefits of the PS5, all the new games, plus full backwards compatibility with the Wii. Man, I think that's great. Got motion built into the, the DualSense. That's gorgeous. I'm, man, in fact, that's the one I'm pre-ordering. After this show, I'm getting online. I'm pre-ordering that. I cannot wait. What else do we have here? Oh, and folks, you know, hey, Maybe you're upset with a new design. Maybe you don't like it at all. Well, you know what? You can just shut your little pie hole and go back and pre-order and get the Let's Go Digital Digital Edition. All right? How about that? If you're so upset with how it looks, you can have this one. This was the, the early version that we thought the PS5 was going to be, the dev unit, rather. Look at it there. Yeah. Boy, that sure looks nice on its side, doesn't it? That sure looks nice. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> All good times. All right, let's move on. We got a ton of stuff, man. I am, I'm not even halfway through the podcast. We're already at 40 minutes. Holy shit. All right, I told you it's going to be a big one. PC Game Show. This was fantastic. Steph and I sat down last night. We didn't watch it live. I was busy doing stuff, but we sat down and watched, went through it and watched it last night. PC Game Show was great. And although it wasn't a live event, I honestly liked it more that it was a pre-recorded event where they were able to take their time in their own uh, studios and homes and like record stuff and put it together and then edit it all. What a job. I bet you that took two months to edit. But it was really, really nice and well-produced. PC Gamer, shout out to you. It was fantastic. A couple games that stood out to me that I really liked. I'm going to try to go quickly through these. Uh, Airborne Kingdom. It kind of looked like, for me, it looked like when uh, the, the Epoch and Chrono Trigger was like flying over the top and like in the clouds and there's like little um, like villages and islands, like floating islands like in the sky. Remember that in the trailer and in that game? It kind of reminded me of that. It looked really, really cool. Definitely into that. Um, New Blood Publishing, which I never heard of New Blood before. So this is great. I, I got... Uh, I got uh, knowledge dropped on these guys, but New Blood Publishing has a whole bunch of indie FPS games coming out, six and all, uh, and it, they look incredible. Like some of them, there's like six different genres of shooter, horror, like sci-fi, uh, retro, like Doom Quake type. Some are like super bloody and like Gibbs and shit like going on. It looks fantastic. So look up 
New Blood Publishing and all of the six FPS games. It was there was a lot of FPS love, and I'm really thankful for that. You know, I love first person shooters. Um, what else was there? Uh, Project Wingman, it's like an F style fighter flight game with VR support. Hell, I love Top Gun. And honestly, I don't think we have enough good flight fighter games. So this was super exciting. Plus, I need to get my I need a good excuse to buy a proper uh, flight control stick because I'm getting ready for Flight Sim 2020 coming out sometime this year, hopefully. Um, so I need to do that. Do any of you have a flight stick? Like a real, not like the one that costs like a thousand dollars. Like I'm looking between, you know, whatever it is, a hundred bucks and maybe three hundred bucks. Like, is there something that's, you know, legit? I don't think I need the full setup with like rudder. Like I can use something on a tabletop. Is there something that you guys have used that you would recommend for me? If so, please get in, get in my discord in the podcast chat. If you want to just chat, there's a podcast uh, chat room and or just call me or send me an email. Live at gmail or just call 503-908-5490. Um, okay. What else is here? Um, Blanco's block party. Okay. This looked hilarious. Toys coming to life when humans go to sleep and leave the room. Like Toy Story all over again. But it's intended for content creators, collectors, gamers. We all can come together and invite as many friends as we want into our world and then play whatever kind of game we want. Arcade games, make it a platformer, a, sh a shooter, a racer. You can just dance. You can do whatever you want. It's a community-focused game that features community gameplay. And I love the idea of this. I love the idea of this. We could be on Twitch streaming and I could be like, dude, everyone come on in, let's party. And then whoever's in the chat, you guys just populate, come in. Oh, I love it. I love it. Everspace 2. We saw this last year at E3 and I, I remember I gave my thoughts right here on the show about it saying it looks amazing. I want to play it. And we're now seeing it again, Everspace 2. And my thoughts are exactly the same. It looks incredible. They are still working on it. And I think this is going to be a great space exploration game with combat. It almost looks like it kind of reminds me of like the early days of like Rogue Squadron when you could kind of just free roam a bit in some of the missions and go around the space. Way, way cool. Definitely interested in that. Mafia Trilogy HD Remake. Okay, uh, spoiler alert. I never played any of the Mafia games. I never got into it. And I know that they were big. I know at the time I was playing Grand Theft Auto back in then. I just didn't really like... I, I, they almost felt kind of like two of the similar things. Like they followed the same kind of like mafia style storyline so i was like uh, i don't know i never really got into it but this looks great this is a remake hd remake of the tr of the trilogy it's all in one package and i was just talking about this last week with pete we just talked about this is like this fits exactly what i want like i never played the originals all right i'm not going to go back to my xbox or you know early like the pc or whatever and like try to get these games to work let's just buy the hd trilogy get a fresh coat of paint and revisit them with updated visuals, updated audio, like, but it's the same experience. Brilliant. I'm all for it. I'm definitely interested in that. Looks really, really good. Um, Shadow of Doubt. Minecraft meets James Bond. Stephanie's words. Oh, yeah. I want that game so bad. Anything that has the word detective to used to describe it is a must buy for me. I thought it looked extremely unique. Very, very cool. It almost reminded me of like early 90s kind of detective point and click games in a way. Like I know it was like first person stuff, but like I played a lot of point and click games in the 90s that were very dark and kind of had that like mist kind of feel to where like, I don't know, that game does not anywhere resemble mist, but you know what I mean? You know the feel I'm talking about. Very, very cool. Um, Metal Hellsinger. This looks great. This one really caught me off guard and I instantly grabbed the laptop was making notes I'm like this looks dope. Basically, it's a rhythm first person shooter game where you need to shoot to the beat of the music. Yeah, I, I first thing I said to Steph was like, I, I'm going to be good at this game. I'm going to be good. Drummers unite. Let's go. Musicians unite. Let's go. This is going to be fantastic. So very, very cool. Um, yeah, yeah, very, very cool. Uh, that's all I can say about it. It looks great. It looks like, um, it almost looks like a kind of like Doom-esque, very, very bloody, very like um, kind of fast paced because of the music. You know, like there's, I mean, they're they're playing like, I didn't write any of the bands that were featured in there, but it's it's like metal and like, what, what other genres do they have in there? I don't know what they said. I mean, metal for sure. 
I know it was like Deathcore. I think some Deathcore was in. I don't know what it was, but it looked really, really good. Yeah, there was a variety that they uh, that they provided. I'm assuming just really like up, not upbeat, but like intense yeah. music for those fight scenes. Yeah, it looks great. It looks great. Um, cool stuff. Would not was not expecting that. And then finally, red sails. This one looked really, really beautiful. Almost casual and almost very calming. Use the stars to navigate your sailboat, but you're not on the water. You are in sand in the desert. Wait, what? Yeah, it looks very relaxing and unique. I got to give it to them. It looks great. Those were the games that we saw during the PC game show. It was very, very great. If you haven't watched it yet, definitely go check it out. The VOD is on YouTube. Itch.io bundle. This was, if you're listening to this podcast, like the day of or the next, like I'll try to get the show out tonight. But if you're listening to it on the, you know, the night of the 14th, go to itch.io like right now because it's still there for like the next eight. I think it's there for the next like maybe uh, 24 hours. You can get a bundle of games that support great, great causes. They offered a free or not free. They offered DRM free bundle that included over 1600 games and programs. Yes. From over 1300 developers. This is not a joke. It was called the Bundle for Racial Justice Inequality. It's fantastic. I was just talking about this two episodes ago about inequality and racial justice, and this is a great way to help uh, support the cause as well. Um, their goal was to raise five million. All right, all proceeds are going to Black Lives Matter movement, and their goal was to reach five million. And they've since of recording this, they've raised over $6.4 million. It's a pay what you want uh, bundle. And it starts out, you know, like five bucks. I think they have on their default five bucks. You can put in any amount that you can and are willing to, to put in for the cause. And I think it's brilliant. Stephanie and I both went in, we bought our bundle and uh, it's great to, it's great to get all these games, but it's also great to actually do something and help the cause and make some change. Um, so I want to draw attention to that. So it's on itch.io. It's right there on their front page. So definitely get on there and check it out. And they're not Steam keys. They're games and programs on itch.io. Itch.io is an independent, it's a, it's a platform for independent developers to put their games on. And you basically download them like as a file from their site. They did say that they are creating a new way to organize them and put them together. Like they are redoing like their, their website because of this and trying to figure it out. And um, so that will come in the future, but it's absolutely insane. There's like 1600 and some odd games. and like, you can't even scroll through them. There's just so many, so many great games, but really the big thing is that you're, you're helping a great cause. So definitely get in there and do that. Um, EA access comes to steam. Wait, what? Bruh. What, 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 what? Yeah, you read that right. I saw an advertisement on Steam. It said, enjoy the best of EA access in Steam. And then it was like in fine print at the bottom, like details coming soon. It wasn't even a fucking available yet. Hey, I've got the deets. They were excited. They were, they were, but I've got the details. <laughs> Newsflash, spoiler alert. You ready for this? Here's the thing. Since no one uses EA access, they're like, we got to get them on. We got, we got to, we have to somehow, we have to somehow trick the community to, to make them think that we are bringing the best of what we have to offer to Steam. Gamers, gamers are dumb. They won't, they won't know. They won't understand how this works. Fortunately, we do. We know how it works. If you buy a game, on Steam, that is an EA Access game. Guess what's going to happen? Can we get any 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 uh, ring dingers out here? Uh, I'm going to get my dingwoo ready because I think this is a certified, genuine dingwoo opportunity. If you buy now, now this hasn't like officially been announced or anything, or we don't know yet because it's not there. But I am calling it. I I am co so confident that this is how it's going to work. I am saying it now, like it's like it's real because I feel like it's real. Because I know, because Ubisoft does the same thing. And other devs do the same thing. EA wants you on Origin at all costs. 
They don't give a shit what they have to do to get you on there. They want you on Origin. And they're going to get you on Origin one way or the other. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Think about it. You're going there. You're on Steam. No, I'm on Steam. No, 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 no. You're going there. You buy a game on Steam through the EA Access Portal or whatever they're going to have. And when you launch that game, your Steam, it will minimize. And you'll be like, oh, great. The game is launching. This is great. I love this. This is so fantastic. It's so great to be a gamer. And then, out of fucking nowhere, Origin launches. <laughs> Origin will launch. You will have to log into your Origin and you will play that game through Origin. Don't be fooled. If it doesn't work like that, if it does not work like that, then butter my buns and call me a biscuit. Because I will be blown away. I will be blown away. Shit, I need to get my Retro Fighters controller. Hold on, be right back. Okay, I'm back. That was quick for you, wasn't it? Retro Fighters, here it is, folks. You can see it on the screen. I got the Retro Fighters. This is the kickstart. I've talked about this a few times. This is the kickstarted controller for the Dreamcast. All right, it's going to be out of focus, but that's okay. There it is. Looks very nice. First of all, first impressions are very good. 10-foot cable, wired. I'm not about that wireless life, folks. Come on now. Get a wired cable. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm old school. I don't mind wires, especially when they're 10 feet. This is great. All right. First impressions, very comfortable. Feels feels a little light to me. A little light. Um, not, not like low quality. It feels... Okay, I would say right in the middle of the road. Not like it's thick and heavy like a real Dreamcast controller and not like a cheap third-party garbage. It feels right in the middle of the road. Uh, joystick, first impressions are that the, the feeling on the thumb is very nice. It's rubber. It has an indentation, a concaved bit. You definitely will not be able to see that. Okay, no problem. But uh, it feels nice on the thumb. I do like it. I prefer it over the original Dreamcast that has a raised all plastic joystick, which I feel like they missed the mark on that big time. Um, so the joystick is nice. Maybe a little light on the resistance. Probably could use a little bit more on the tension, I would say. Lighter than a 360. We've all played a 360 controller. Lighter than that. Okay. D-pad. I think the D-pad feels great. Um... Not bad. Kind of has a soft sort of click around on it. Buttons. They have a nice little little click. Gamers, you guys and gals know when you hear that, you know what we're getting into. The clear and turbo buttons up here are a kind of a more uh, hard click. You can hear that. All right, so you know what that is? It's ASMR. A yeah, a ASMR. I should, I should, I should be more quiet. ASMR. Oh, those are good ones. Listen to that. The uh, uh, the L and R bumper buttons are definitely a hard click, and then the the triggers um, they do have weight to them. They do feel spring loaded, and they just kind of feel. Uh, I can't say that they feel good. They kind of feel like cheap, a little bit. They kind of do. I hate to talk negative. All right. That's about the most, that's about all the positives I'm going to have to say about this thing. And you know, like a lot of reviewers, I see a lot of reviewers online who, who got their review copy of this and, you know, and I respect these companies like retro fighters. Like I used to know the people over there at retro bit, you know, they make great stuff too. And, you know, there's a lot of companies who are doing third party stuff. And a lot of people will say what they want to say just because they don't want to end that relationship. And I get that. This is a whole, this is actually, I'm not even going to go into this. There's a whole nother conversation here about that. But I have always been upfront and real and I'll tell you how I feel and I'll tell you how it really is because unfortunately my standards are pretty high when it comes to things. And some things not, but I want things to function properly, period. That's it. And if it's like, if it does kind of that, but not all the way, I'm upset. And I'm going to talk about it. 
And that's probably why I don't get a lot of people reaching out to me and be like, yo, Jay, you want to do a review of this? You know, like, cause I, I will call, I'm not negative Nancy. I just call it how it is. You know what I mean? Here's the thing. I streamed last night. I was playing Dreamcast games on my Dreamcast with this plugged in live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Heine house, by the way, go, go give me a follow and smash that follow button. <laughs> smash that like button. Um, no. So I played four games. I played Star Lancer, I played Giga Wing, I played Dynamite Cop, and I played Rush 2049. I played all four of those. I beat Giga Wing and I beat Dynamite Cop. So I went through start to finish two games with this and played four. So to put it through its paces. I also put in um, Daytona USA because they have an analog controller um, option in there to configure and test your analog on your controllers. Yeah, newsflash. If you have any Dreamcast games that are analog, plug in your controllers and launch that game and go into options. They have analog. And this this is where I tested them. Unfortunately, unfortunately, and I didn't try it with my other controller. I bought two of these, right? I bought I supported them and bought two so that Steph and I could both play. The unfortunate part about this is that the joystick, although I love the feel of it, it's almost as if it's a little bit twitchy. It's almost like it kind of has an overreactive personality. Sometimes, especially in Dynamite Cop, when you kind of have to be very specific of where you look and where you go, I'll, I'll barely move it. And like my character will kind of like jump. He'll kind of move and do weird things. And maybe it's the game, but I haven't noticed this when I played with my my official Dreamcast. And also, I should have got brought out my Mad Cats one time. <laughs> Bless you, my dear. Mad Cats actually made a great controller for Dreamcast. Great controller. They're all see-through. Yeah, it's in the bin up up high. Don't go and I have it stacked up pretty high. 20 bucks. You'll get it for 20 bucks. Oh, hell what a deal. You know what? I'll give you one of these controllers. If you go get it. <laughs> How about that? In that case, I'll do it for free. Oh! <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh! Oh! Zinger! <laughs> she got him. No, I really like retro fighters. In fact, I want to buy their brawler. That they have for N64. I want to buy. I want to buy like four or five of them. They're all in different colors, see through. They look amazing, and I'm still going to. This isn't like a diss on their company. This is just a missed opportunity. The Dreamcast controller. Okay, so the the joystick seems to be a little over overreactive for me. Okay, the biggest issue that I have though is somebody on Facebook. I saw they posted a video. They were talking about they feel like the triggers are only digital, not analog. Whoa! If they're only if they're only digital, I was going to flip my shit. I was going to absolutely go ballistic. That you have an analog feeling trigger. There's no right real way to do this. Show you guys, and then have it be digital. I was going to be so upset. First thing I did before I even streamed that night, I went live. Everyone was coming in. I launched Daytona and I went in to double check. This was an interesting thing to do because what I found was that these analog triggers, for one, are very inaccurate, and two, they both have different dead zones. So my left trigger doesn't engage until about half until about halfway down. After about halfway down, depressed, then it goes, and then basically it goes from about halfway to fully depressed, all right? So the first, let's just, let's just break it up like from top to half, nothing happens. Then from half to fully depressed, it goes the full distance of the analog scope. Does that make sense to you? Okay, that's my left joystick. The right joystick, however, as I barely press it, it begins to engage and it gets fully depressed. It registers on the game, it's fully depressed at halfway, at halfway pressed. Then from halfway pressed all the way down to fully depressed, nothing happens because it's already fully depressed. Does that make sense to you? Okay. I come from a long line of analog control. I love analog control. I love games that support it. I love controllers that support it. Having proper analog control on your joystick and your triggers is is mandatory uh, on some games. It changes everything. I love racing games. It's crucial. This is this would actually break 
some games for me in racing. Like I could not play test drive Le Mans with this. Why? Because you have to be extremely accurate, which by the way, test drive Le Mans is one of the greatest racing games on Dreamcast. Go buy it. Or how about Ferrari challenge, which is a sim, which is a sim. This would not work for that. Very frustrating. I have not tested the other controller. I would have to see if it's identical or if I get different results. I don't know if I have a defective controller and I don't know if this is just the way that it is. Now, does it work? Yes. Do the triggers function? Yes. Does the joystick work? Yes. Is it as accurate as an original Dreamcast controller? No. Is it as accurate as my other Mad Cats, way cheaper by the way, controller? Not as accurate. Very frustrating. So yeah, that's my review. <laughs> that's my review. And you know what? Sometimes, sometimes you have to just call it like it is. I'm not going to be like, this is amazing. Bro, this, I spent 50 bucks, a, a controller with them. 50 bucks. All right. I spent 100 and plus shipping. All right. For these controllers. And I don't think it's worth it. Now, I'm happy I supported them. Why? Because I believe in the company. I love what they're doing. And I will continue to support them in the future when they make other products. However, I will be very cautious about what I buy in the future from them. N64 might be a better bet because the only analog on that controller is a joystick. Oh, boy. Yeah, so anyway, there's my review of that. Let's move on. Uh, you want to hear Animal Crossing music played by a Tesla coil? Ah, I know you do. When you, when you came in here today, listening to the show, you go, you know what, Jay, I really want to hear Animal Droppings music played by a uh, Tesla coil. Well, you know what? That's coming right up. This is the absolute coolest thing I've ever heard. Listen to this. Wow. How do I do this? Wow. Oh my gosh, you guys, if you want to watch the full video, go to uh, YouTube and type in Animal Crossing New Horizons performed on a musical Tesla coil. It's from a YouTube channel called Arc Attack, A-R-C-A-T-T-A-C-K, exclamation point, Arc Attack. Wow. That's electricity. <laughs> How do they do that? That is so cool. 5 p.m. never sounded so good. It's quitting time. Here's my Tesla coil. Uh, how about just a little bit more? So they're in this like massive facility and they're just, dude, and they have this like robot drummer back there too. Just getting it. So good. I love the bass line too. Where's the bass line coming from? Is someone playing bass, man? That's so good. Anyway, yeah. You know you wanted to hear that. I know you did. I mean, that's the number one thing. Everyone says that when they tune into the podcast. They're like, you know, I want to hear a, I want to hear some Tesla coil. All right, we're going to move on. Um, let me skim through some of this tech news. We have a lot of stuff going on in the tech tech area too, and we're already like past the hour mark. All right, can I wrap this up in a half hour? Let's go. Google was sued on Tuesday in a proposed class action lawsuit accusing the internet search company of illegal illegally invading the privacy of millions of users by tracking their internet use through the browser through Google Chrome, when it was set in private mode. That's in incognito mode, folks. Google Chrome allows you to browse privately in incognito mode and specifically says that you're track they won't be tracking your data. Well, they were. They were. The lawsuit seeks at least $5 billion in damages, accusing the company, which is Alphabet Inc., of uh, collecting information about what their people view online when they are in incognito browse mode, despite Google saying that they don't do that. Uh, lost, the lawsuit says, Google cannot continue to engage 
in the covert and unauthorized data collection from virtually every American with a computer or phone, the complaint said. It seeks at least 5,000 of damages per user for violations of federal wiretapping and California privacy laws. Well, if that's the case, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Crazy stuff. Uh, there's a um, kind of a, a Trojan, a virus, and uh, some sort of uh, ransomware, a bunch of stuff going around right now in Discord. I want to bring it up because I have a Discord server. I have a Discord community. I use it heavily. And I, in fact, just upped my security to the highest level that Discord offers to form factor off and off authentication and also I've done um, you need to have a verified phone number to even be a part of my server. Now, will that turn some people away? Sure. Does that mean that I will have the safest and most secure server that Discord offers? Yes. So I'm protecting my community? Yes. I will do that every step of the way? Yes. I would rather have a server that is secure and locked down that allow that would require our users to jump through a few extra hoops if that meant their security was top priority. That's why I'm doing it. So you have to have a verified phone number on your account in order to even join the server, which um, of course is not public. So uh, I have had I've had that question. It's not public. It's just attached to your account. Now there is a but there is a virus going around with links. All right. So just be very careful about what you click on in Discord. This was reported by Bleeping Computer. A threat actor released a new version of the Anarchy Grabber malware. This is actually malware that's been out for a while now. This is like a new version of it. Um, it's called Anarchy Grabber 3. This Trojan variant modified a Discord user's app data folder in their Discord. It's app data, Discord versions, modules, Discord desktop index file. Just so you know exactly where it is on your computer. That's the file it goes after. Upon successful installation, it could load JavaScript files, fucking JavaScript, Java pool, JavaScript files. It first loaded Ingex in a script that then called in discordmod.js. All right, this is real, real technical stuff, but I want to talk about it exactly how it is here. Together, these two scripts that they that they load in, they log the victim out of the client. And it prompts them to re-authenticate themselves. It, it forcefully logs you out and forces you to log back in. And you're like, oh, I guess it's just disconnected. Let me log in again. When you log in again, that's when it steals all of your credentials. The mod it's a modified client at that point, And it preys upon its victims by then attempting to disable the two-factor authentication, 2FA, on their account. Then it will steal various information from the victims, including their login name, email address, and even their plain text passwords. Simultaneously, the client listened for commands sent by the attacker. One of those orders instructed the client to send a message to the victim's account's friends, thereby helping to spread the malware even more inside the Discord users. Basically, they take complete control of your account, your server, your friends, everything. It's theirs. It's extremely dangerous. This is why I wanted to bring it up. Be very vigilant, folks. If you ever, not just from me, if you ever get a message from anyone on your friends list that looks suspicious, maybe the typing is a little all fucky, looks a little weird, you know, it's not, the, the sentences aren't right, English is a little fucked up in it. Maybe it's got some weird links that you don't know. Maybe your friends wouldn't send you weird stuff like that. Do not click on it whatsoever. Text them, call them, Facebook them, IG them, Twitter them, do whatever you can outside of Discord and let them know they need to look at their account. Something may have happened. They need to try to get back into their account. All right. They need to uninstall Discord. They need to do all that. They need to try to wipe wipe that claim. Um, so again, that's what you can do. Just be very vigilant. Enable two-form authentication. You have to have that. And in some cases, some companies are doing 3FA, three-form authentication. If it has it, use it. You need to do that. Also, do not use your same passwords across the board. Use different passwords on everything. I know it's annoying. You can get yourself a password um, uh, a password manager. Um, you could do that. Like LastPass, you could do that. That's great too. You could physically handwrite your passwords and store it somewhere in your house safe. Hey, hey, I'm just saying. You could do it. Absolutely. 
I know lots of people that do. It's great. You got to have it. Um, and it's just to reiterate, uh, you know, my security measures on my server are to protect my community, but also protect the server and protect everyone who's in it, you know, protect the community and protect them from spreading it to other servers or things like that. So I encourage everyone to just be vigilant with that. All right. If anything happens in my server, there's weird links, there's spammy shit going on. I am on it. I kick, I ban on the first. I don't fuck around. I don't mess with it. It's really simple. In fact, we had something a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was early in the morning. Um, we had some someone join the server and instantly post a spam link. Could have been something very bad. Um, boom. I was like, okay, fuck this. You know what I mean? Fuck this. I upped it to a certified uh, registered phone number, moved the security, did this and that, and I banned the, the person that came through. We don't mess around. So be very careful with there with that. Um, there evidently had been leaked photos from uh, the, in, the new NVIDIA 3080 GPU. This is very fascinating. We've heard rumors, right? And I try not to report on the rumors. I try to wait till we have something more concrete. Well, we have a leaked photo. And oddly enough, which blows me away on this, it, it comes from the assembly line of where these are being manufactured. What? Dude, that is so scary. NVIDIA right now is fucking freaking out. They are so mad. That's an inside job. Inside job. Let me get my mirroring going on so I can show you guys this. Insane stuff, to be honest. Can you imagine? They have very strict rules about not having cell phones and, you know, your tech with you when you're working on, you know, hardware like this. Not only that, it's most of these places are like, you know, white glove, white suit, like, you know, static free type shit, you know? So... The, the fact that this even exists is very, very interesting and fascinating. Here's a, um, here's a shot. There's a shot of it here. Very, very fascinating. It looks cool. Looks cool. Looks massive. It looks like, uh, I mean, like the whole top of it is basically a heat sink. <laughs> As you can see, I mean, it kind of needs to be, right? It kind of needs to be. So yeah, that's very, very cool. I like that a whole bunch. Now, I don't know what no pricing or anything like that, but you know it's going to be expensive. It's going to be a, a hot little item. But uh, you know, down the road, yeah, this is those are probably going to be the cards that we all end up getting. You know, down if you're an Nvidia fan, you know, down the road, going to get the thirty uh, the thirty series thirty eighty. Very cool. There it is, in the bags. Uh, we're going to jump over to the voicemails. That was that was tech. Yeah. Got some tech stuff, has some gaming. A lot of great stuff in this episode, man. I feel like I've just been talking, talking, talking. That's what that's what I do. Uh, it's been tons of fun. 503-908-5490 is the phone number. If you want to get at me and talk about anything that I discussed in this episode or any ep other episode, if you uh, want to talk, I'd be happy to do so. You can also record yourself on your, your phone, your computer. If you're on the browser, go to cleanfeed.net. Select your input device, your microphone from your headset. You're sitting there. You're probably, are you on the computer right now? Are you sitting there? Send me a voicemail. You're just sitting there. You're chilling. Go to cleanfeed.net right now. I'll wait. Type in your input. It's actually a really cool program. And then just hit record and record it and email it to me. Live at gmail.com. How about that? Email it on over. Let's go ahead and jump over to the phones here. Uh, I've got my... Let me log into my Gmail. It'll give me time to play the uh, the voicemail intro. Got voicemail. Damn right you do. And let me stop my mirroring and then pop one on here. It looks like it's from our good friend Nathan. All right. Let's load it up. Nathan, thanks for the call. Appreciate hey, you. Jason. Nathan here with a question about PC gaming. All right. I have a 2011 MacBook Pro, so I'm completely out of the loop with uh, what modern PC gaming is all about. Um, my question is mainly about launchers, uh, and more specifically, I guess, the Epic Launcher, because ever since the Epic Launcher came out, I've noticed people are just, I don't know, really, really angry when a game is only going to be on the Epic Launcher or a timed exclusive or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and my question is because I, I, I genuinely do not have a good understanding. Like I'm missing a piece of the puzzle here. 
because I'm confused as to why people are so angry. Because in my mind, a launcher is just just something you click on to open up the game. Like I I, I don't know. I like I said, I'm missing something here because I, I don't understand what the big deal is about. You know, if you're playing something on Steam, you just close Steam and then open the Epic Launcher. Uh, you know, which is I guess inconvenient, but it doesn't seem that enraging. Like I, I have a PlayStation, and I, I'm I'm imagining uh, if you know a, a game came out on Xbox that wasn't going to be on PlayStation, you know, I, I would be really disappointed because that would mean I have to go buy an get Xbox the other console to play that right. Game. Yeah, that makes sense. Where in my mind, like the, the whole launcher situation is almost like if I found out I could download an Xbox app on my PlayStation and just open that to play Halo or something like that would be know, great. Would it not be a big deal? But yeah, that'd be great. It would actually be a great thing. Yeah. I yeah. Exactly. Play Xbox <laughs> games on my PlayStation. But exactly. I, I know that's different, but I get you. I get like what you. Maybe saying. you can see why it's hard for me to understand why completely why having to use a second launcher is such a huge deal. Yeah, I, guess. I get it. Um, like I said, it, it's genuinely a question. I'm just looking for, uh, you know, an explanation as to why, why it's so bad that, um, like I said, I'm missing something anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for taking my question. Nathan, that's a great, that is an absolutely great question. And this is why I love the voicemails because like I'm getting a different perspective. Look at that. We are hearing from Nathan, who is not a PC gamer, who is looking at it from the outside, looking in saying, what the fuck is the big deal? You just double click a launcher, open it up and play your game. You guys have access to all the games. I would have to buy a new PlayStation if I wanted to play Halo or not Halo. Um, if I wanted to play, um, what's the game? I don't even uh, you Uncharted. Noob. What? <laughs> Send you new. I know. I'm sorry. I, I meant uh, Uncharted. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. I get it. I get it. So when you put it into that perspective, you start to kind of laugh at yourself like, wow, do we really complain about that? Nathan, I'm going to explain to you why this is happening. Also, I've been in the game for so long doing audio. I'm going to just guess. I want you to, you can send me an email. You can just, you can write me in Discord. I don't really care. You don't have to send a voicemail if you don't want. I'm guessing that you recorded yourself. You were in your room that had carpet on your, you were on a MacBook or MacBook Pro laptop and you're using your built-in microphone. That's my guess. Let me know if I'm right. Um, so here's the thing. People are upset because originally it was just Steam, right? It was just Steam and everyone was happy with Steam. All the developers, all the publishers, they're like, yay, a place to give all the our games in one place Send them over there, make it happen. They were happy with that for many, many years, a decade almost, pretty much. What happened was some developers started to get a little greedy. Um, some publishers started to get a little greedy. They started to say to themselves, well, fuck Steam. We can make our own launcher. We need to build, we need to build it ourselves. Why give Steam all the money? Why give it, why don't we do our own launcher? There's smart people out there. Have them develop a launcher for us so we can launch our games in our own launcher. Well, what happens? Well, EA creates Origin. And when they launch Origin, what do they launch it for? I know I feel like I'm attacking EA, but they're just they're just up for, up for it right now. They launched it with Battlefield 3. I think it was with BF3. They fo No. Yeah. No, no. Wait, was it? Or BF4? Or even earlier. I think it was 3. I think it was 3. Yeah. yeah because we had to use Battle Log. Ugh, Remember? Yeah, that was God. Cool. Oh, my God. I just... Oh, God. Why did I... I ugh, Oh, I got a dirty taste in my mouth. I, we had to use Battle Log, which was in the browser, mind you. But then they created Origin, and then they're like, hey, you have to use Origin now. And then it was like the only way to launch Battlefield 4 and then all of the other EA games. There were no other games that were on there yet. Same thing with Ubisoft. They started out in the very beginning with like one game. It was like Assassin's Creed something or rather. Something like that. It was an early game. They're like, we're creating our own launcher, and we're forcing you to download this launcher and use only one game. Now, Nathan, to your point, you're talking about, yeah, but you just click it and open it. The problem is, is that it starts to become so convoluted, so complicated that we don't even know. Shit, I meant to make a list, Steph. Damn it. I meant to make a list of this for him to talk about all the launchers. Yeah, I forgot to do it. It starts to become an issue 
because we have so many launchers that every launcher launches a different game and we start to like forget what it is. Now, still, Nathan's sitting there going, so? Just deal with it. Exactly. We do deal with it. Aren't there like, there's like eight different ones. There's Epic, Steam, GOG, Origins, um, Bethesda. Activision. Activision. Battle.net, yeah. Battle.net. Um, there's like another one. Uh, you said you play. No, did I? No, I didn't say you play. You, yeah. I think. Itch.io. Itch. I mean, I don't know if they have a launcher. I think you I just it's not go, a launcher, just you don't. Okay, so take yeah. There's, there was another one called Des, Desura. Oh, the Microsoft Store. Oh, Microsoft Store. Microsoft yeah. Microsoft Store. There was uh, one called Desura. It was like D E S U R A. But mm -hmm. I don't know if that's even still active or not. There's a bunch. So anyway, we're almost to 10, right? We got eight or nine. So we almost have a bunch of those. And we start to get confused. Like, here's, the, here's also the thing too, Nathan, is that originally developers and publishers put their games on Steam, right? And then like, let's just take Call of Duty, for instance. Call of Duty used to always be on Steam. Well, up to a certain point, what was it? Black Ops 2, they stopped, I think. Or Advanced, Advanced Warfare, I think. Advanced Warfare is when they stopped. And they're like, we are now going to force you to go play it on the Activision the Battle.net. And you're like, wait, what? Like Battle.net's now, like the Blizznet, it was Blizzard.net, now it's Battle.net, now it's a part of Activision, like they partnered. So now we have this like pool of, of stuff that's going on. It gets very confusing. So like, you want to play this? You have to play it on Steam. Like it just gets confusing and it's annoying. The And I know what you're still saying, it's like, yeah, but that's still not as bad as buying another console. Yes, and I agree with you. That is very, that's a very true and very fair point. It bottlenecks our PCs when we have so many launchers. You should see my toolbar. It's just full of launchers. It sucks. But the biggest thing, Nathan, is really this. The biggest thing is this. Tripwire Interactive, and this has happened many, many times. I'm going to bring up Tripwire Interactive because they're actually still doing stuff and they're, they're current. They just released a game called Maneater, which is basically a shark, a game where you play as the shark and you're basically like Jaws going and attacking and eating humans. All right. I haven't played it yet. In fact, was going to buy it day one. I really wanted to get it because I love Tripwire. love what they do. love Killing Floor 2. It's tons of fun. want to support them. Here's what happened. I wish listed the game like a year ago when we heard about it. We heard about this, what, two years ago, actually. E3, two years ago. Two years ago. Wish listed on Steam. Ready for it. Release date's coming. I'm excited. I'm like, oh, it's coming out next week. Boom, I'm super excited. Release day gets here. The Steam store... And maybe it changed prior because I wasn't looking at it, but maybe it changed six months ago. Maybe it changed a, a week ago. I don't know. It went from the ability to pre-order and, and, and get it to release date TBA to be announced. Release date to be announced. And everyone's like, wait, what the fuck is going on? I went into the community hub. I'm looking at the forums. People are freaking out. They're like, wait, where did this game go? It's today. It should be out today. Why not? It's because... The Epic Store contacted Tripwire and offered them a much better deal to publish their game and release it on Epic Store exclusively for however, however long, a duration of time. And that's what they did. They, in fact, pulled it out of Steam and went with Epic Store. Epic Store, this is why people hate Epic Store, because they're coming in with their fat pockets and they're taking games publishers, developers, and they're saying, come to us, get the fuck out of Steam. We'll give you 80% of the revenue share. We'll do 80-20 as opposed to 40-60 or whatever it is. I don't even know what it is, but I've heard from some developers that it's 80%. And if you're a developer and you release games on Epic, correct me if I'm wrong. Why would you not? As a business, why would you not? Except you're not getting the Steam people. You're not getting that. So people have kind of come together and they're frustrated and they're like, fuck Epic Store, this and that. And I see it again. Here we are again. Like I see it from both sides. They're trying to help developers. They're trying to like give them a better deal, keep them in business longer. We're coming from a world that if your game doesn't do well, it can shut down your entire studio. It's sad. So like I kind of commend them for it. Like I, I, I thank them for that. But also like Epic Store is a complete base, like... There is nothing great about it right now. Steam is so robust. Now, it's taken them 15 years to do this. Yeah. I remember being on Steam back when it launched. I was there when it was Army Green. 
and had nothing but a launcher for uh, Half Life and um, Ricochet and uh, Half Life Deathmatch. I remember that. I was there, 2004. I was there. And it's taken him a long time to get to this point. And Epic Store is not there yet. It is very basic. It's actually kind of annoying looking, to be honest. It has huge pictures for everything. It's just, it's terrible. They will fix it in time. Of course they will. Um, so that's why people hate it, Nathan. It's uh, they're they're taking, they're taking. I don't I don't like that. I don't like when they came and say like, look, 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 just just leave Steam, just leave it all together and come to us. All right, our numbers are growing every day. All right, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get there someday. Come release the game here for the next six months and then go to Steam and get the best of both worlds. Because what's going to happen in six months when they release Man Eater on Steam? I'm going to buy it. Oh yeah, I'm going to buy it. For sure. So I want, I want the game and maybe it will be on sale. Then I'll forget about all this, right? Well, yeah, I guess I will. I guess we all will. Because then we can play it. See what I'm saying? It's kind of weird. It's, it's weird. I know. I know. It's a weird thing to think about. But Nathan, I appreciate the, the comment. And actually, when you put it in perspective of like buying another console to play another game, it starts to feel silly. I have another, like, to play. Uh, well, another idea as to why people are getting frustrated. And it, I don't know, maybe it's not as common, but Steam doesn't require you to have a credit card. Like, you can go to a store and buy Steam cards. And there are some people who do not like having their information online. It's true. They don't want to have a PayPal. They don't want any of their bank info online. They just, they'll go to the store and they'll buy a gift card from right. Steam with cash and use that to and purchase a card. game. And I don't know if any of the other launchers have that option. I know EA does, I think. EA does? I've never, I don't remember seeing cards like that mm -hmm. for them. Oh, well, I better not speak. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But I definitely have seen Steam gift cards. True. Yeah. And that's, that's what a lot of hackers use too for people. When they scam them on the phone, oh, they want them to go to the store and buy Steam gift cards. Steam gift cards? Yeah. Oh my God. Don't ever do that. <laughs> yeah, don't. If they, if they ask for gift cards, it's a scam. Yeah, very interesting stuff. That's, that, that's a great point too. Yeah, some people don't want to have their information, you know, put out there. I think it's a great point. Absolutely great point. Okay, now we're going to hop into uh, the, uh, the voicemail again, and we're going to take a call. And this one is from uh, the voicemail maniac himself, Mr. Cameron Johnson. But this time, I listened to this one already earlier, and uh, which is great. He has a question for Steph. So we're going to do this a little differently this time. All right, so what I'm going to do is I, I sent you the, the voicemail. So just play it from your, from your phone okay. into your mic so that everyone can hear and you can hear it and then All right. you can answer it. Here we go. What's going on, Mr. Heine? The voicemail maniac, Mr. Cameron Johnson here. Oh, let's see. Um, sorry, I just did a got my workout done. Had a was struck with some inspiration. Nice. Um, yeah. So on your last, I think your last podcast, you mentioned you sold a whole, whole bunch of your NES games, or maybe your your entire collection. Um, <clears throat> I'd just be curious why uh, why did you why did you do that? Have you rebought any? What were, was the reasoning? Were you just kind of sick of the the rat race that is, that became NES collecting? Um, and uh, you know, that, I think I've, I've been in the same boat, so it's always interesting to see why people do things like that, like sell collections. <clears throat> Let's see. And a question for Steph. I don't think she gets enough questions here. <laughs> now that she has a microphone, yeah, I'd like to know. What uh, Stephanie? What are your uh, favorite things to collect? Are you much of a collector? Are you more of a, I guess, a gamer versus a collector? Or is there a percentage split? You are of either or. And what is uh, what is your favorite thing that you've bought in the last year? We'll make it interesting. So uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate the content as always, and. We will see you again next week. My very first question. <laughs> yeah, great question, too. Great. Thanks, Cameron. Thank you. I'll let you go first. Okay, here. cool. Cool. Um, yeah, so... Go ahead and mute your mic real quick. So, yeah, you're talking about... Yeah, I did talk about that. I'm going to be real with you, dude. I'm, I've always been real, 100% real all the time, so I'm going to just lay it out. I'm going to just tell you what really went on. When you... 
when you own your own business, and in my case, I at the time I was owner of two businesses, one that produced a convention, a great, amazing gaming convention here in Arizona called Game on Expo. Sometimes you have to do things that require you to um, keep your business running, to keep it afloat. Uh, long story short, something happened in Arizona at Comic-Con that year. It was This was 2016. Something happened that year where a armed, a, a person cosplaying as the Punisher went into a, a Comic-Con. Come to find out that person who was cosplaying as Punisher actually had a real live shotgun and sidearm on him, loaded, and was attempting to go kill police officers at the convention. The person was tweeting about it live for whatever reason, and people online that were home, not at the convention, were like, uh, what? Contacted police. They tackled him, took him down, found he had loaded weapons. It was a complete train wreck. Long story short, that was, that was June of that year. Our convention was in August of that year, two months later, in the same complex in the city of Phoenix. That did something. That did something to us. The city, okay, fuck them. You know what? The city fucked us over. All right, they did. They screwed us over. They forced us to pay a very, very large amount of, of money. Forced us to pay it or we wouldn't have a show to up security. We were forced. We were doing it anyway. We were going to do it anyway. But they forced us additionally a bunch. I'm not talking like, I'm not talking like a few thousand dollars, okay? I'm talking a lot of money. So what happened? Well, as a business owner, me and my partners, we had to pay that. And like most people, I don't just have, you know, a bunch of money just laying around in a bank account somewhere. All right? I don't. I'm not rich. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not. Stephanie and I talked about it, and we, had, we came to the conclusion that the only thing we could do was sell off our shit. All right? Real talk. I grabbed all of my NES games, my entire NES collection, consoles, games, controllers. I had about 250 games. Steph, she grabbed all of her games. I don't know she had maybe 50 or 60, something like that. Yeah. My Legend of Zelda statues, too. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even talk about her. her uh, first four figures. Anything first four. That, yeah. Her World of Warcraft, her Sonic. She had like five or six inbox, mint condition, not even displayed. Like she's waiting to put them up in a proper place. First four figures. These figures are like, they're four or 500 bucks a pop. They're very, very nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. We cried. We cried a lot. We cried. Yeah. It hurt a lot. <laughs> it hurt a lot. But that's the cost of doing business. We were in a position where we had to, and you know what? At the end, it's just stuff, right? We can replace the stuff if we have enough money someday, but it's, right? It's better than like us losing our life or something, right? It's just, it's stuff, but this is part of business. I got in this business this is what you have to deal with. So I chose to sell all of my stuff. She chose to sell all of her stuff to try to help pad and get money for the large amount of sum that I had to be a part of and be responsible for um, in my business. And it helped. And it helped for sure. And yeah, it's very sad. So that is why I know Cameron's probably like, oh, he was probably thinking, oh, he's just oh, he's ready to move on. He's going to use the NES classic, you know. Sorry, bud. It's, yeah, it's kind of deep. It's definitely more deep than that. <laughs> there is there is a layer. There is a much deeper layer to my life in general than what I than what I want to share to the world, like stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like there's there's this there's this. I love doing this. I love being a part of all of this. But like behind the curtain and behind the camera, like I'm a real person that deals with real shit just like you. Because reality is I know every single person listening to this right now or watching this right now, every single person is struggling right now. You're struggling. I know you are. I don't care if you've got 10 bucks in the bank or 10,000 in the bank. You're struggling. I know it. And I try to get on here and I try to be this beacon of light and be this bit of positivity and this bit of comedy and fun. And I try to make this a moment where we can just, for the next hour and a half, just fuck off for a while and just have fun. 
But also sometimes I get deep. I talk about stuff because I'm real and I can't help it. That's just the way that I am. Someone said to me recently, was it on Twitch? Someone said to me, don't worry, we're going to ask you a question. <laughs> I haven't forgot. Someone said to me recently on Twitch, Jay, the thing I love about, the thing I love most about you is that you are 100% real and you have been the whole time. I've been watching since the beginning. You're so real. That's refreshing. I can't say that about anyone else. And this person said to me, I think it was in chat too, it was in Twitch chat. They go, has that affected opportunities for you to, to move forward and to progress and to grow? Has that affected you? And I sat there for a second. I'm like, whoever this person is, I forget who they are. I don't know if it was Justice, Fancy Justice or it was Willie or somebody. Sheriff Willie. At, it was somebody else. I remember talking to him after. We got on Discord and we were talking. Um, and I apologize. But, and I said, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I said, yeah. It has. It probably has more than I know subconsciously, in person, you know, online. Yeah, it has. I think people are afraid to say how things really are. They are afraid to be themselves because most people hate themselves. Most people hate the world they live in. They hate everything about it. And I get it. I get it too. I have many times where I'm, I literally am crying. I'm breaking down. I'm saying, what the fuck? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I here? You know, like, why am I here? Maybe I'll tell a story sometime. I had a really great story about how I almost did. I almost became a podcast producer for a local company here in Phoenix. I don't really want to talk about the specifics of it, but it was a really cool story where I just remember I was actually crying. I was breaking down in Stephanie's arms, literally crying, saying to her, like, why don't people like me? Why does this happen to me? It was an opportunity that I got and then pulled right out from under me the day of like a great opportunity, a big opportunity, like making real money, like in a real job, doing real podcast production, like that I'm good at what I want to do. Like I had big round table suit and tie meetings with these people. I brought in my gear, my microphones, my mixer. I showed them how I would do it. I told them how to build their room. I told them how, like we told, I talked about the layout. We talked about the, the mics they need to use. I sat with them like and critiqued their setup. I, I said like, I said, look, this is why, this is your podcast. This is why it sucks. And they wanted it. They're like, why does our podcast suck? I said, because this, 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 and this needs to be this, 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 and this. I can provide that for you. I can do that. I said, listen to my, go back and listen to 10 years of my shit. I got you. They took all of the information I gave them, all of the knowledge, all of me trying to sell myself and be a part of that team, part of that company. And they were to pay me more than I'd ever made in my entire life, a year, yearly salary. They pulled it out last second and went with someone else for whatever reason. I did get the last laugh though. They, why, why was it? Oh. I told them. Because you wanted to do a test run and he was mad. I wanted to do pre-production. He wanted it right away. He wanted it now. Yeah. You're like, no, I need to test this to make I sure said, it sounds I okay. I said, I can't just show up and make magic happen. I, I mean, I can, but I would be, I would be not prepared. I said, I need to know what I'm working with. I said, let me come out on a day before you record, or let me come out. Let me come out tonight. Let me come out anytime. Look at this, look at the room, look at the setup. Let me make a gear list. Let me prepare. This is all part of why it's so great. This is great. This is the part of why I make great content. Let me prepare this. It's called a pre-production. And he didn't want to hear that. He wanted me to come out that night and 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 make something happen and make it and perfect. Fully record everything. And you're like, I don't even, I don't like, even know what I'm recording. <laughs> you're like, I don't even microphone. know where it is. What do I need to do to the room to fix it? Like, like it could take. Do I need an extension? It could take like, a full day. Yeah. Like I'll fill my entire car full of shit, which is fine. But like, what do I need? You know? So I told him that and he was basically like, fuck you. And he, he went with someone else, I guess. Someone else. Some, some other person that was like, yeah, I'll come in and do it. No problem. And that's great. You know, they took the opportunity. But about a year later, about a year later, oh, I guess it was about maybe eight months, six months. 
Three months? Was it? I, I guess it was. I feel like it was only like a couple months, like maybe two, three months after. Yeah, I guess it was. Or at max, like five months. Yeah, you're right. I remember being in the car, getting the email and just yeah. laughing. Yeah. Got an email from him. And, and, and mind you, after they said all this to me, I sent back a very polite and business perfect email. Thank you again for the opportunity. And I tried to say, is there anything I, I can do to, to, uh, to remedy this? Is there like, do you need me? I, I, I'll come out. I really will. I said, I can't guarantee anything, but I will come out. Like, is there, what can I do? And they're like, no, thank you. We've, we've, we've gone with someone else. That was like all the, uh, and I said, okay, fine. Wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity. If an opportunity ever arises again, please do be in touch. That's what I said. And I, and I kept it like that. Three months later, I get an email. Hey, Jason, it's so-and-so from so-and-so. Hey, are you uh, still in the podcast industry? Are you interested to still uh, work with us to become our podcast producer for this show? You know, we have a lot of great content coming up and we'd love to get you in on it. And I, I felt good because I had the last laugh. I remember I told them, I said, yeah. I said, I am still in the podcast industry and I am still available. My pricing is as follows. Pick one of three tiers. Yeah. And I sent in the list of what it cost me to produce an episode. And it was great. And they never, <laughs> and they never back. fucking <laughs> responded to me. I think it's because I, it was you like explained to them what you would do. And they kind of thought stole that from you. Yep. And we're like, we'll just get this other Joe Schmo to do it. Yep. And they and you even like watched an episode and you're like, wow, they took all my advice and they still did it wrong. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, I, it's brilliant. You brought that up. I forgot about that. We did. We watched an episode. I don't, I'm not going to say who they are. Yeah, I'm not no. going to do it. But we watched a, an episode post all of this drama and they did. Yeah. The intro. They had all like they had bought the, the microphones. Yeah. I suggested. Remember the stands. They had all the stuff. And the room was set up. up. The room was set up like I had said. And it was still fucked up. Yeah, it was crazy. Wow, I'm really sorry about that side tangent. And I apologize to you, Steph. <laughs> We're going to answer your question here. Yeah, way to ruin my moment of glory. <laughs> I know. Oh, God, people, please don't hate me. Please don't hate me. I don't want you to hate me, please. Enough people already hate me. I'm just kidding. I mean, a couple people do, but it's all right. All right, we're going to get to Steph's question. Um, so... My question was, um, if I'm a gamer or a collector, right? That was one yeah, part. Yeah, like, are you more of a gamer, more of a collector, I think is what he said. Um, I used to really be into collecting stuff. Um, pretty much any game, uh, any merchandise I would go for. And then um, when I had to move, I quickly realized, oh my gosh, this is too much i cannot i cannot handle all of this yeah moving the collection is is, is brutal awful. it's horrible awful and so i decided you know what i'm just gonna really focus on the games i really enjoy that i really love the franchises and collect for that and even still like kind of keep it to a minimum I don't want to have to try and move all of it again. I actually did end up selling a bunch of it, which it sucks, but I wasn't going to, I didn't want to carry it all with me. No, like books and like, I mean, you know, we think about the collection, CDs, like compact discs and book, especially books, books are way heavier than discs, but like that media adds up. It's so heavy, right? So heavy. Um, and then books. She loves books. She she reads books. She has the collection of books. And oh my god, that is some heavy ass shit. Yeah, sorry. I'm I'm answering like I'm doing work at the same time. So Jason's filling in for me. Yeah. No. No. We're this is a team effort. This this is love right here. She's literally working from home here, doing her job, but also we have the microphone set up so she can kind of go back and forth. And I'm I'm intermittently pausing the episode as we work through this. This is great. I'm just happy you have a mic, and I'm happy that you're chiming in now when you can and. And I, I appreciate Cameron sending questions over. So if you, again, folks, do you have any questions for Stephanie as well? Uh, she, uh, she's here and she's, she's willing to take them all. <laughs> she's like, please don't say that. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't. All right. Yeah. So I just like focus on the franchises. I really like Dying Light, That's Legend smart. of Zelda, um, Left 4 Dead, Killing Floor. Like just 
just focus on that because I used to like get a whole bunch of things like I like Resident Evil but like I had a bunch of figures for that that I ended up selling and it was just too much too much and it's a pain to dust man <laughs> if you have a oh, lot yeah, of that, stuff that's really true yeah, yeah yeah and I I have allergic I think I'm allergic to dust mites so the more dust that collects is like pretty bad for me but she likes dust bunnies because they're bunnies. Yeah, I like the bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> I think the older we get, and I, th I think it's it's really nice to actually get to this point. The older we get, we realize that like we don't need to collect everything. I don't need all this stuff. Yeah, I used to be that way, and I'm so glad I'm not anymore. Just collect what you want, like you said. Yeah, collect the franchises you're into. I think that's really smart. Yeah, and what was the other? The question? second question he said was, "What was the?" What was the best thing that you've purchased or greatest thing you've purchased within the last year? Oh, okay. Yeah. It's that Presto smoker and slow cooker that <laughs> <Yeah>. we got. <laughs> this is true. Okay. Real talk. Real talk. She bought this Presto indoor smoker. I was looking for it. We were looking for a, a slow cooker for a while because we have a small, like a, like a three quart one. It's very small, but it's functional. Mm -hmm. But we're like, okay, yeah, we need to get a bigger one. And did I tell the story about the brisket? Did I? I feel I, like I did a couple episodes ago. I don't know. Did, she ordered brisket oh, from the store. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't no. talk about it. I was going to. She ordered brisket from the store, right? Because it was on sale. I was like, oh, and Jason's family's coming down. I'm like, perfect. I'll just, you know, do that as a nice treat. Yeah. How sweet is that? They're all coming down. We're going to have brisket, right? Smoked brisket or whatever. She says, and she puts on there like, give, it, give me the smallest one you have. Right. <laughs> 18 pound brisket shows up. Yeah, it's this fucking big. All right. I can't even carry it. It's you know bigger I mean? than Joxer. Yeah. It's bigger and weighs more than he does. It's unbelievable. So yeah. So Steph starts getting online looking up smokers and it's, it's unbelievable. We, we cooked chicken in it recently and I put chicken in there, just chicken patties, chicken breast. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, I'm eating at like a barbecue restaurant, like real smoked barbecue. It was really, really good. How was the cleanup? I, uh, it was, not that bad. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm going to ask this, you about that. One thing, though, the smoke, oh, it's real smoke. Yeah. It fills the house and it sticks around for like a week. Yeah, it stays. Like it's like you walk by the unit and you still get a whiff of it. Yeah. We bought we the only wood did chips, it once. you know? Yeah. It's a real deal for sure. But uh, I guess gaming wise. <laughs> <laughs> she bought a fucking smoker. I mean, I guess that is tech. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's the tech podcast. You're in the right spot. Um. Kitchen moments with Steph. Yeah. Uh, it would probably have to be like my uh, new desk that I got for my PC. Oh, yeah. Your PC gaming setup. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I've, I used to have like a small, oh, very tiny, dinky desk and it was very wobbly. So it, basically, yeah. if I moved the mouse and I had a full cup of water, it, it would spill over. It was I really bad. On the mic, I think. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty wobbly. It was pretty it was, pretty jank. Yeah, but it it worked. And then I was like, you know what? I need to I need a bigger desk because I pretty much had like three inches of space for my mouse. And you know, like gaming, like a first person shooter, having to like constantly lift up the mouse is not. Dude, she had as bad as take <laughs> yeah, any good. mouse pad that was available in 1993. <laughs> And chop it in half. Yeah. It was, that was how much room she had. It was and I'm a, like, it's a very tiny desk. I kept going in there and going, ah, we got we to gotta do something with your desk. I know. She's like, oh, it's, oh, it's okay. And just like, finally she did it. Yeah. Now you have a really nice desk. Yeah. I, I did got, you mention it's L? Yeah it's, an okay, L yeah. it's a nice L shaped desk. It's nice and sturdy. It doesn't shake. So I can have it's a like couple. all aluminum square legs and like wood on the top. And yeah. Really, really nice. And, and your monitors too. Don't forget your monitors. Yeah. I got a hy hydraulic. Mm -hmm. stand for my monitors oh it's so nice it, i know it's like i don't know if it's not popular like i've never really seen a lot of it and like pc setups but oh my gosh it's like a game changer yeah it creates so much space stands, yeah creates so much space and you get to have it closer to your face because i've Apparently, I'm going blind in my old age. <laughs> I have the Apparently. monitor right up to my nose. No, but it's nice. You can adjust it like specific height. So if you want it, you know, taller than what the stand is, you don't have to get um, one of those desk stands that take up space. Right, right. It's really yeah, you convenient. You actually free up your entire front or 
I guess top. It's like the of the desk. Yeah, you free up so much space on your desk. It's a yeah, now we filled it. We filled that space with speakers yeah. and a headphone amp and your headphone. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and I got a nice new fee fine, fi fine, fi fine, fee fine. Fee fine. Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah, I'm mean, using the right one of those right now. Yeah. yeah, we love it. But I got a a new microphone, so I actually sound decent and not I don't know garbly. No, I mean not the, like the Logitech. Sound- yeah. Microphone. Not like the 2002 shit. Yeah. 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 She sounds good. Much she, improved. She uses the same microphone I did a review on. You guys have watched it on the YouTube channel. It sounds yeah. great. So when we're in Discord gaming, like she sounds great. It's nice. I think that's a great answer. I mean, yeah. Our, I, I mean, the gaming area is legit. Like that is, that's key. To yeah. And game it wise, up. it would have to be animal droppings. Yeah. For the Switch. Clubhouse games comes pretty close. Mm. I didn't even mention that. I meant to put that in. You're welcome. <laughs> she's, she's, she's saving my ass. She's saving my ass every step of the way. She's great you're here. We got Clubhouse Games, and it's amazing. It is literally like the reason to get a Switch if you don't have one, if you can even find one. Uh, and speaking of finding one, my good friend Bido, I know he listens to the show. Hi, Bido. Thanks for listening. Hi, Bido. The, he texts me, and he goes, uh, it was this morning, actually. He goes, my target says that they have some in stock. Should I go in? I said, yeah. I said, call them. Call them first thing in the morning. This, honest, my sleep schedule is kind of fucked up. It was like four in the morning. And he goes, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait a couple more hours and go in. He went in. He sent me a picture. He got one today. And he bought Clubhouse Games. That's crazy. I thought they were like pretty much out of stock everywhere. He actually texted me down that too. He goes, the guy at the counter said they just got this shipment in. Oh, wow. So it just showed up. Like they, they scanned him in so he looked and at updated a, the SKUs in the inventory. Yeah. And that's it. He, I bet you they're gone. That today. was, yeah, I was going to say his timing was impeccable because if he Plus, looked at it a day later, I'm sure it wouldn't be there. No, hell no. They're gone. Plus he got a Clubhouse Games physical copy. I didn't know they made I, them physical. Makes me sad. We bought it digital, and I want I want everything to be physical, even if it's a fucking download code. Yeah, I was gonna I say most most uh, games that you get are just like yeah, you put in the disc or cart, and it's like downloading the game from online. I bet you it's, <laughs> it's just a, it's just a key to I bet do you it. It's just like Fortnite, just a little piece <laughs> piece of black and white piece of paper. Like, <laughs> <laughs> go to this link, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, anyway, we got Clubhouse Games. We streamed it uh, two nights ago, community game night, Saturday night, uh, last night. Again, another shout out to my Twitch. Please, folks, come by Twitch. Twitch.tv slash The Heine House. We were playing Yahtzee. We were playing Uno. These are all, they're not, they call them Yacht Dice. Like, they don't have the license to call them these real names, right? So, but we were playing Yahtzee. We were playing Uno. We were playing Sevens. Uh, we played Dominoes. Uh, there's Blackjack. These are all four-player games that we can play online together. Please, folks, get the game. Let me know that you have it and get in and let's play. In fact, after the show tonight, after I edit all this, we're Bido and I are going to play. We're going to get online and we're going to fucking play some Java pool, some Yahoo pool. I wish they had bingo on there, four player yeah. or like multi room bingo. That could be. Oh man, yeah, having like twenty player bingo. They need to make fifty two game. How could they not do that? That sounds pretty good. No, no. bingos. I mean, they'd copy the other games. I don't know. Nintendo's always been. We'll call it bongo. I don't know. <laughs> Bingo, bango, bongo. <laughs> Call it bongo. I love it. It's a picture of like a percussion, like bongo, real bongo, bingo. Good shit. Good shit. All right. Hey, this is, uh, sorry folks, that it's been a two hour podcast, but guess what? Also, thank you for your question. Thank you for including me. Isn't that, <laughs> that was great? very sweet. Yeah, totally. Thank you, Cameron. Thanks, Nathan. Appreciate the calls. Hey, folks, you got any other questions? 503-908-5490 is the phone number or record yourself on your computer. Email it over to HeineHouseLive at gmail.com. We'd be happy to get on the show for next time. Uh, HeineHouse.com is the website. I'm not going to play any outro music because we've gone too long anyway. Folks, it's been real. It's been fun. I love you bunches. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to me and Steph talk. We will see you on the next episode. All right? Bye now. Bye-bye.